Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about window installation best practices. I'm Rob Campbell, this is Bryant Coogan. Bryant is our in-house expert on WRB systems and business development manager for Rings End. Thanks Rob, I appreciate that. Um, like Rob said, we're going to be talking about a couple different things uh, today. One, what are the different types of weather resistant barriers that are out in the field when we're building our homes? Uh, two, also the install best practices for Marvin Elevate windows. Before I get onto site, or once I get onto site, excuse me, uh, one thing I like to look at is what type of sheathing are we using? What type of weather resistant barrier are we going to be using? And again, who is the window manufacturer? This is really going to help us understand how to install that window and also what type of window and door flashings and sealants that we're going to need to use while installing that window as well. We always want to make sure that we follow the install best practices of the window manufacturer to ensure that there is a warranted application. We also want to make sure that we understand uh, the weather resistant barrier install best practices as well to ensure a warranted application with that as well. Today we're going to be talking about Henry Blueskin VP100 and the accessories that go with that system. We're also going to be talking about window installation best practices with the Henry system. Brian, can you tell us a little bit about some of the things that we're looking at here? Yeah, I think one of the big points that Rob brought up is the system. Henry's done a really great job with putting together a really comprehensive system of products. Today we're going to be talking about Henry Blueskin VP100. Some of you may have seen it on some houses around the area, um, but there's still quite a few questions out there that we're going to answer for you today. So keep in mind we'll be talking about that. Another thing we're going to be talking about is the rest of Henry's system of, of products. They have their Blueskin Butyl Flash, which is a uh, Butyl Hybrid product, which is going to comply with Marvin Elevate's install best practices. We also have the Moist Stop Sealant, which is going to comply with Marvin as well. It's ASTM C920 NS Class 25, which is part of their requirement. And then there's this one tube right here that's called Crystal Clear 212 Sealant. Everybody thinks Blueskin VP100 is probably the best product that Henry makes. This is the most crucial product that Henry makes to ensure that this system of products is going to perform the way we want to perform on the job site when we're out there. So Brian, you mentioned that uh, this system is compatible with the Marvin brand of products, but what about other brands like Anderson or Harvey? Yeah, absolutely. That's a really good point. I mean, a lot of window manufacturers now, specifically Anderson, Harvey, and Marvin, want you to use a product that's non-rubberized asphalt on their PVC flange windows, whether it's Blue Skin Butyl Flash or Zip Tape or 3M All Weather Flashing, they're either butyl or better or even up to an acrylic adhesive, which actually is the most high performing. We always want to ensure that we look at install best practices for the window manufacturer as well as the weather resistant barrier manufacturer that we're using. So we're complying with warranties and everything's going to be compatible and work well together. So today we're going to be installing Blue Skin on a conventional wall system. You can see we've got Doug Fur CCX plywood here conventional dug fur framing. Brian, talk to us about some installation best practices with Blueskin VP100. Well, Rob, you bring up a really great point. Uh, I'm going to bring up this point again, like you've seen in previous videos, is when I first get onto a job site and I'm working with either Blueskin VP100 or other traditional house wraps or other peel and stick house wraps, I want to evaluate what we're using. Rob says we're using CCX right now. The upside of Blueskin or other peel and stick house wraps is you can use it over any type of substrate, whether it's dense glass, OSB, or CCX plywood, you have the opportunity to choose the substrate that you feel comfortable with for your project. Before we install Blueskin VP100, let me go ahead and talk about a couple features and benefits that are really going to be important when we're putting it up on this wall. As you notice on this roll, it's a 4 foot by 100 foot roll. On the top and the bottom of the actual roll, it's got a printed line that's continuous. This is going to be really, really important for the overlap of the roll. Now, talking about overlaps, when you're putting Blueskin VP100 up on the wall, we want to make sure that we have a two-inch overlap on our horizontal seams and a three-inch overlap on our vertical seams going up and down the wall itself. Also, as you can see on the roll, there's little dash marks on the top and bottom. This is really crucial for install of Blueskin VP100, and it's really going to be helpful when we're on site because this is a four foot by 100 foot roll, and it's 28 pounds. So trying to lift this thing up and put it on like traditional house wrap isn't going to be the easiest thing out there. So what I tell guys to do is let's understand the walls that we're working with and cut our sections that we need. So if you need a 20 foot section, you count one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. And we can cut our 20 foot sections and be ready to install blue skin on the wall. Now, once we've cut our sections, there's one more other thing I want us to understand is 
Blue Skin VP100 is a split release film and it's a butyl hybrid adhesive, which is actually pressure sensitive. So it's really nice if you put it on the wall and it's in the wrong spot, you can reposition it to the spot that you need it to go. Now we're gonna go ahead and install some Blue Skin VP100 on the wall. Rob and I have cut out our sections of Blue Skin VP100. Now Blue Skin's really unique because this can be applied horizontally like traditional house wrap, or you can turn it sideways, install it up and down. So depending on how you're set up on site, whether if you have scissor lift or a lull with a box, or you're using pump jacks, it's gonna be really easy for you to install, which is really crucial with a peel and stick product. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna install this horizontally like a traditional house wrap. There's a little trick. Most people really wanna work from the split release, which it's intended to work from, but a little trick that I found out in the field is, you wanna fold this over about an inch and a half or two inches, and you can roll the top edge back, and you give yourself a little dog ear. So what does this do? It allows me to find my spot on the wall with my partner. We can go ahead and stick this to the wall. We can run down, make sure that we have enough coverage, and then we can roll the rest of the roll out like Rob's doing, and we can stick it to the actual house itself. What we'll do is we'll just cut this off here real quick. So as you can see, Rob and I have this all rolled out. It's stuck on the top corner on each side of this. This is just one way to do it. I'd recommend getting a hold of your Henry rep and he'll come out and actually do an install best practice training to show you a couple tips and tricks to make your life as easy as possible and find something that you feel comfortable with. There's another trick I wanna show you guys here with Blueskin VP100 is, like I said, Blueskin is a pressure sensitive adhesive, right? So yeah, it's stuck to the wall, but we can take it off and we can stick it back to the wall, which is really nice if we're going downhill. But once it's stuck to the wall, inherently we wanna go ahead and smooth our hand over it, right, like we would with a window and door flashing, but that's not gonna be enough pressure. We wanna make sure that we apply pressure so it wets into the actual substrate itself. So instinct is to go ahead and pull the release film on Blueskin and then rub our hands over it. But if it's a reside project or the, the framing uh, sheathing has splinters in it, chances are we're gonna cut our hands and we don't wanna do that. This little brush here is actually really cool. It's easy to keep in our belts uh, and it will apply enough pressure to the blue skin itself to get it to wet into the substrate. So when you pull the release film, just take it and rub this instead of rubbing it with your hand. It's gonna be a lot safer and you kill two birds with one stone instead of having to go back and roll everything on the wall. So this is really gonna explain why this continuous white line on the top and the bottom of the roll are gonna be really helpful for installing. Like I said, horizontal application of this, we want a two inch overlap. Now this is a little bit more than two inches, but when Rob and I bring this to the top of the wall, we can use this as a guide for us for overlap, right? So now I have my top corner peeled off, Rob's holding it. And then I pick this up, depending how you're doing it. And something else, a little trick that's gonna be really helpful for you guys in the field is if, if you see behind here, the release film's at a 45 degree angle, right? So if you take your time, one extra second, two extra seconds with Blueskin VP100, it's gonna be really helpful to get rid of a lot of the wrinkles and the bubbles. But if you pull straight down, this is gonna release a lot of the wrinkles and the bubbles out of the film instead of trying to pull it off really, really fast when you're installing it. So Brian, now we've got our blue skin on the wall. Um, I've noticed that it can be very easy to get a couple of wrinkles here and there uh, while we're putting it up. Is that gonna affect performance at all? No, not at all actually, Rob. And that's a really good question because one of the biggest things that we get calls about are the wrinkles in the actual blue skin itself. One thing we need to remember with blue skin VP100, yeah, it looks really great on the wall, but it's not your final cladding, right? We're gonna cover that up. And another thing you guys should know about blue skin VP100 is being a fully adhered peel and stick continuous air and water barrier, it's also what they call nail sealable. So it passes ASTM D1970, which is a nail sealability test. So every fastener that we use, whether it's with cedar, hardy, vinyl, 
uh, Boral, any exterior cladding product, Blueskin VP100 actually gaskets around every single nail that goes through it, making it a truly continuous air and water barrier, which is really, really nice. We have Blueskin installed on the wall now and it's all the way over our window opening. Before we start prepping our window opening to install the Marvin Elevate window, let's just review some of the install best practices and cover them before we move any further here. Like I said, blue skin four foot by 100 foot roll. The top and the bottom has a continuous two inch line. It's a little bit more than two inches. Um, it's gonna be really helpful for our horizontal seams to be two inches. And when we have a break in the wall and we have to cut it, we want a three inch overlap on our vertical seams. Like I said, the, the two big lines, that's gonna be one foot. The small line's gonna be six inches. So it's gonna be really easy for us to understand where that three inch overlap is if we are using our notches in the blue skin appropriately. Another thing we want to remember too is there's inside and outside corners to our houses and our buildings, right? So to wrap blue skin, we don't want to just wrap it around one or two inches. We want to wrap blue skin VP100 around the corner, a minimum of six inches onto the other side of the corner. A, a good way to do that is either be really proficient with blue skin and be able to wrap a four foot piece around a corner or utilize those, those hash marks again and cut 12 inch strips so once you get to those corners, you have a 12 inch strip that you can place on the wall to get your six inches of coverage on either side of that corner. All right, so now that we've got our blue skin on the wall, Brian, it looks like you've drawn an eye on our opening, which is a little different than the modified eye cut that we would typically use with a standard WRB system. Can you tell me a little bit about what we're gonna be doing to prepare this opening for window installation? Yeah, Rob, good point. Um, like you said, I've already drawn out the eye cut. This is just one of the few ways that Henry will recommend preparing a rough opening for a window. Henry's done a really good job of recognizing that, for, I guess for lack of better terms, there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat when we're installing windows. And there's a lot of different schools of thought in regards to water management when it comes to a rough opening itself. So what I'm gonna do here is just prepare this window opening, just one of the ways that Henry would prefer you to do it on site, which is also gonna be in line with Marvin Elevate window install best practices. So as you can see, with the eye cut, we're actually gonna be folding the Blueskin VP100 into the rough opening and cutting it flush with the back of the rough opening and the interior of the wall itself. Now this is just one of the ways, um, and when we think about Blueskin VP100 and we think about today's building practices, this is one of the ways to uh, increase some air sealing on the building itself by wrapping Blueskin all the way in and so you have your full air seal all the way into the rough opening of where you're gonna be installing your window. So now that we've got our blue skin cut, we are ready to prepare the sill and get the window installed. As you may be able to see, we've already pitched the sill with a piece of bevel siding. And Brian, you've got some flashing in your hand here. Uh, you wanna tell us about what kind of sill pan we're gonna create with this beetle flash? Yeah, so in some of our previous videos, we used a stretch tape or a flex wrap. I'm gonna go with a more traditional straight flash with this and show how we can do the bow tie method with a straight flash on this window sill pan. So we have a number of other products here beyond just the butyl flash we'll be using on the seal pan. Brian, can you tell us a little more about the flashing tape and some of the sealants we have here before we move on to putting the seal pan together? Absolutely. So Rob in his hand has Blueskin Butyl 4 inch flashing. It's four foot by 75 foot roll. Uh, it's a butyl hybrid, so it's gonna stick a little bit better than traditional butyl flash. It's nice and thin, it's clear, which is really good for using on white windows instead of a black adhesive like we have some, on some of our other flashings. We have Henry's Moist Stop Sealant, which we've been using right along in all of our videos for behind window flanges. This will comply with Marvin Elevate install best practices. It's ASTM C920 NS Class 25. And last, what you're gonna see here is another sealant. Like I said earlier in this video, this is a really crucial sealant to make sure that we use this on terminating in any uphill laps. And what you're gonna see when we install this video is blue skin, unlike traditional house wrap, we cannot fold up the head of the window itself. So in traditional waterproofing, we always want to go ahead and terminate any uphill laps to ensure a seamless flow of water down the wall from north to south. And this is going to be a big part of that. All right, Rob, you ready to throw this sill in? Let's do it. Cool. 
So what we're doing here is prepping our um, windowsill pan. We always want to make sure that we're using an impermeable windowsill flash, whether it's a straight flash like Blue Skin Butyl or Zip System Stretch. Um, we want to make sure that we follow code requirements and window manufacturers install best practices by covering the whole pan and bringing it a minimum six inches up onto the actual jam itself. So Brian, why do we have these little squares of flashing here? What are we using this for? Well, good question, Rob. These little squares are going to be really crucial. We're actually going to cut these into bow ties. So unlike stretch wrap where we can go ahead and stretch it around a corner like we did with that zip stretch, we actually have to make sure that we protect this little corner right here from any wind-driven water and getting water into the actual window pan itself. So I'm actually going to fold these in half and we're going to create bow ties to protect that corner. Now one of the crucial areas when using a traditional straight flash is making sure we protect this with that bow tie like I was saying before. You want to apply the bow tie, bring it nice into the corner, get it as tight as we can. We want to bring it down over the top. And now as you can see we have a nice protected corner where we potentially could have as small as a pinhole. And as we all know water will find any way to get into the opening itself. All right, so Brian, you've got our sill pan installed. Um, looks like you're getting ready to roll that in place. Something I want to point out, you can use any laminate roller to apply this kind of flashing tape. As you can see, Brian's using a zip system roller to apply this flashing tape on the sill. One more thing I just want to point out to our audience here. Brian, the straight flash me method that you used with bow ties, that can be accomplished with any conventional flashing tape. So it could be done with a Henry product, but it can also be done with a number of the other flashing tapes on the market. So now that we have the eye cut done and our windowsill pan in, I do want to point out one little detail that we need to address. The Henry system of products, they approach it with a belt and suspenders approach, so meaning better safe than sorry, right? And when it comes to traditional waterproofing, in this application, they have uh, here what's called an uphill lap or a leading edge. Now Rob's going to be using the crystal clear 212 sealant, so it's the blue tube of, of sealant from the Henry Company to terminate this top edge to allow any potential water to flow down seamlessly and get onto the impermeable windowsill pan and flow out of that window opening. Now that we've got our opening prepped, we've got our shims on our sill opposite the bevel that we pitched out, we're ready to install our window. Here to talk a little bit about Marvin Windows and unpacking our windows and some things to look for is Kathy Langen. Kathy is our education coordinator here at Ring's End and somewhat of a subject matter expert on windows and doors. Kathy, could you tell us a little bit about what to look for as we unpack our window? Sure, Rob. Now, once the window is ready to go in, everyone's excited. You just want to get the plastic off, get the cardboard off, and get that window in an opening. But it's really important to be careful and to, and to look for a few things prior to installing the window. So now, Rob, Rob's going to take the plastic off this window. And one thing that is very important to always keep in mind when you're using a utility knife near a window is that you don't want to damage anything on the window. So best practice would be to remove the plastic on the side where you have the cardboard as your buffer. So Rob's going to do that. And once the plastic is off, um, you can see there he's being very careful not to cut through because you don't want, as I mentioned, anything sharp to touch the window. And now this window, this is a Marvin Elevate window, and here at this particular window we have our screen right here and then there's these straps. We do need to take these shipping straps off so that we can remove the cardboard. You know, this Rob's doing that where the knife is nowhere near the screens. And, and Marvin does a very good job of packing their windows to help prevent any type of shipping damage. Uh, so we need to remove all the cardboard that's surrounding the window. So now we have all the cardboard removed from the window. So now there's a few things we need to do prior to getting this window in the opening. The first I would recommend to do is to remove the screens because screens can be damaged during construction, get dirty, and it's very important to get that screen out of the way and have it in a safe place so it doesn't get damaged. So 
So there's little pins in the corners. As you can see, Rob is open the lower sash to get those out. Now he's gonna close the sash. There we go. We're gonna put this in a safe place so it's out of the way. Now that we have the screen out of the way, now we're gonna think about other things that need to happen here. So we've removed the screen. What else on this window would we remove? Well, this happens to be a double hung window, so the hardware is already attached. But if you were to have a casement window or an awning window, there would be a package of hardware that would be taped to the window. So that would need to be removed and as well put in a safe place, collect all the hardware, put in a bucket, just put it somewhere so it's out of the way and safe so that when time comes to install install the hardware, you know where everything is. So here we, on the side of the window, this is an Elevate window, on the side of the window there will always be stapled these corner gaskets. And these are very important to keep track of. These are used as part of the installation of the window so you do not want to lose these. So these as well as the screen and the hardware should be put in a safe spot. So now we've talked about things that need to be removed from the window. We've removed the screen, we've removed the corner gaskets, and we've removed any hardware that's been taped to the window. Now we're gonna talk about things to leave. We wanna leave the labels on the windows for now because you'll see this label here has all the energy information that might be pertinent to use for the building official, uh, for energy codes. So you wanna leave that label on as well as any other labels that are on there now. There could be labels that show how to operate the hardware, how to tilt in the sash, and those things will be necessary as the project moves on. So we're gonna leave our, label, our labels on for now, but we do need to remember that once we get the window in the opening, and the window has been installed, the, it, the windows have been inspected, then is the time to take the labels off. And you're gonna to wanna to remove the labels when there is no sun beating on that window because what will happen is, if there is glue on a label, that sun will soften it and it'll be really hard to take off. And you should be able to take all the labels off with just Windex or soap and water. It may take a little bit of time, but never use anything sharp to scrape the labels off. So another thing in looking at the window that we want to leave for now are you'll see here these little red pieces here. Those are shipping blocks and that's letting you know that they are there. Um, you never remove the shipping blocks or if there was any type of strapping wrapped around the actual window, that you want to leave in place until the window is in place because that has been put there by Marvin to help prevent damage during shipping which also will aid you in the installation of the window. Okay, so now we've talked about things that we need to leave on the window and things to remove from the window. Now we're gonna take a good look at the window because now is the time to go over this window and look for any hidden damage that may have happened during shipping. Even though windows are packed really well and they, there's the plastic and the cardboard, there could be some damage and you wanna find it now. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna look over the window, look for any type of dings, damage, uh, cracks in the glass. Now is the time to address that. And what you will need to do if you find any damage is here in the corners, in one of the upper corners on the Marvin windows, you'll see a little etching in the glass. I recommend you take a photo of the etching because then you can blow it up and you can write the numbers off it. Those numbers that are in the etching tell you everything, well, will tell Marvin everything about that window. What order it was, what line item it was, what type of window, all the information they need to then do what needs to be done to uh, correct any damage also take photos of any damage. So you're gonna want photos of the damage, photos of the etching in the glass, and on the packing material, if you can find any labels or anything, it wouldn't hurt to have that as well as a backup. So now that we've unpacked the window, we're ready to install. So we're gonna move this window out of the way. Bryant's gonna come back over here and we're gonna talk about preparing this opening to install this window. Thank you for all the information, Kathy. We'll see you again in a little bit. You're welcome, we'll see you soon. So as you can see, Brian's got our window here ready to go in. We've measured the window, we've checked the size of our rough opening, we know everything's gonna fit. I'm gonna apply a bead of sealant. We're using the Moist Stop Henry product here. Half inch from the opening on three sides, both the legs and the header, not the bottom, and three quarters from the corner. That gives, us, gives the sealant a little bit of room to squeeze out. Okay, so we've got our window in the opening. We're gonna tack it in place, check it for plumb level and square, and move on to shimming the interior and finishing our installation. As you can see, we're using a two inch galvanized roof nail. 
Same that we've used in our other installations, and it's what you're gonna to wanna to use on any nail fin window installation application. Okay, now that we've tacked the window from the exterior, we're gonna check a couple things on the inside and prepare to finish installing this window. You'll notice that the window has already been shimmed. I've shimmed four inches down from the top, four inches up from the bottom, 16 inches or less on center, and at each point of operation, in this case, double hung at the check rail. I've also checked for square, measuring diagonal in both directions. The other thing we need to do is check the sill for level. Nice and level. In addition to checking diagonal, we also, also want to check in at least three directions across the window to make sure nothing's bowed and everything is shimmed correctly. Nice and even all the way through. So now that we're done shimming and squaring the window, the last thing that I'm going to do is take a piece of backer rod and install that at the sill underneath the window. Once I've put that piece in place, I'm going to use the same sealant we've used throughout this installation to seal that piece of backer rod in place. And so what we're doing with the backer rod and the sealant at the sill is creating a back dam to stop any water that may reach the interior. Anything that comes in will hit that and drain back out. The last thing we're going to want to do is check for proper operation. But before we do that, we need to remove the packing blocks that we spoke about earlier. I'm going to open the sash, use the tilt latches, tilt the sash in, remove the blocks, and then we'll check for, for proper operation with the bottom and the top sash. So now we've got our window tacked in place. We've checked it for plumb level square. We've shimmed the interior. We're gonna now nail off the rest of this window. We're gonna wanna nail every other hole all the way around. Okay, now that we've got our window installed and nailed off, we're ready to apply our flashing tape. First thing we're gonna to wanna to do is apply our corner gaskets. Marvin windows and doors supply a corner gasket, but we wanna demonstrate that you can use a flashing tape, in this case our Henry flashing tape, to create an L-shaped corner gasket. We're going to want to apply these to all four corners around the window and make sure that we roll this up on the edge of the window, about a quarter of an inch. Now that Rob's just finishing up putting our corner gaskets on, I just want to point out a couple key details about these new tapes that are out there, whether it's Henry Blueskin Butyl Flash, 3M All Weather Tape, or even the Zip Tape. As you notice, they're really thin. It actually makes this uh, really nice to work within the field. It allows it to be uh, stretchy so we can get those nice quarter inch up onto the actual windows themselves. When we're going around corners, you can cut it a little short so we can stretch it just a little bit. And they're nice and thin so we don't have big buildup on those corners, which is really crucial when we're trying to apply our window and door trim around each one of these products. Okay, as Brian's getting ready to apply our flashing tape to the legs and the head of this window, I'm going to apply a small bead of sealant around each of our corner gaskets per Marvin's best practices for window installation. So while we're continuing to get this window nice and watertight, I just want to point out uh, the style in which we're applying all these products onto the wall. We've started from the bottom and worked our way up to apply all these in a shingle flash or weatherboard style on it. From our windowsill pan lapping over the top onto the actual weather resistant barrier. And now we're going to be putting the legs of the window flashing on. And then finally we'll go ahead and put the head flashing on, so everything is properly shingle flash coming down the wall. We do want to make sure when we're applying the flashing tape, we extend it a minimum two inches above the actual uh, window flange itself. And again, like we talked about with those corner gaskets, let's make sure we're rolling it a minimum of a quarter inch up onto the actual window itself to make sure that we're creating a really nice watertight seal between the window and our window and door flashing. So now that we flashed our window correctly, per Marvin Install Best Practices, we started at the bottom, worked our way up in a shingle style fashion. You're gonna notice that this head flash right here, this is what I was talking about before. This is what's called an uphill lap or a leading edge. And the Henry Company really wants us to address this. Because when water's running down the wall from the top to the bottom, 
there is a potential for this, if this is not treated, to go ahead and peel this head flash off. And we do not want that to happen because now we're going to allow water to potentially get into our window opening. So Rob's going to use the crystal clear 212 sealant from Henry to go ahead and terminate this top edge. Now what Rob's going to want to do is he's going to want to start two inches down on this side, run it up, run a continuous bead all the way along here, and then run two inches down. And what we're going to want to do once that's complete is what they call butter it out or smooth it out. So it will actually weld the Blueskin Butyl Flash, for lack of better terms, to the Blueskin VP100 and create a seamless finish when we're all done to allow that water to flow correctly. Brian, I've got a question. Before we apply this sealant, do we need to roll our flashing tape around the window? 100%. Just like any other peel and stick flashing, these are pressure sensitive. And to make sure that's gonna stick appropriately to the blue skin or the substrate, whatever we're putting it on, we always wanna apply pressure with a roller. All right, so now that we've got our installation complete, Brian, why don't you just walk us through a recap of what we've accomplished here and any other things you want to share with our audience? Absolutely. So like Rob said, just a little recap. We installed Blueskin VP100 in the Henry system. This actually is part of Henry's 123 moisture control system where you're allowed to grab your flashing, your sealant, and the house wrap, and it's all encompassing of a 15-year non-prorated leak-proof warranty that covers material and labor. With Blueskin VP100 again, it's a fully adhered house wrap, so no tapes or staples required. Two inch horizontal application for our overlaps, three inch overlap on a vertical application. This can be applied like regular house wrap, or it also can be applied up and down vertically to make it for a little bit of an easier install itself. We use four inch Blueskin Butyl Flash and nine inch Blueskin Butyl Flash to flash our windows. And very, very important to keep in mind with Blueskin VP100 is there's two sealants that we want to use. First sealant is the Moist Stop sealant, which is the white tube that complies with Marvin install best practices for behind the window flanges themselves. And the last product you saw us apply was the Crystal Clear 212 sealant, which does the termination that Rob did on that header flash of Blueskin Butyl Flash right there. Now, some features and benefits. This can be left to the weather for five months without having to be covered up. It's nail sealable like I showed you with that little ball jar. Uh, this will help increase the energy efficiency of a home if installed properly anywhere from 30 to 50% over using traditional house wrap because it's blocking the drafts from getting in there. This is really going to allow us to address the whole 2x6 wall and see what we can do for air sealing further down the road. <laughs>